I'm Dawn Hawkins. I'm the executive director at Morality and Media and director for the War on Illegal Pornography and Pornography Harms. And I'm sitting here with Andrew Ogles of Abolition International. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the links between pornography and sex trafficking. Um, Andrew, could you tell us a little bit about your group and what you guys do, maybe just to start with? Uh, Abolition International was started in 2005 by Christian artist uh, Natalie Grant. Uh, she went to India and became aware of the, the plight of women and children as it pertains to trafficking. Um, initially, we were internationally focused, but uh, over the years we've realized that there's such a problem with human trafficking, uh, specifically child trafficking here in the United States, that about 80% of our work is domestic, trying to combat and stop tra uh, child trafficking here in the U.S. Andrew, um, this morning, actually, I'm kind of glad you didn't come a little earlier because I had a little breakdown. Um, this work is, is often very difficult, and we hear from a lot of victims who have suffered in so many ways. Um, and this morning, I got a, a call from a woman who um, was sexually trafficked when she was 14 years old. She's an American citizen. She was taken to India by her mother and sold there. And her, her mom left her, and she was there held captive for 22 years. Um, and miraculously, she was able to, to run away and escape. Um, and she started her own kind of initiatives to help women get out of the uh, human trafficking. But um, I just I couldn't believe the things that she was telling me. She was, she was telling me that so much of it of what they were forced to do it had to do with pornography. She said um, that they were often filmed and, and, and photographed performing sexual acts. And um, she said when she first started that she was shown pornography over and over and over again so she would know what to do. Right. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And I've heard though that these are common links between pornography and sex trafficking. I'm not sure if you've had any experiences where you've you've heard of children or even adults who are trafficked and well you know from a traffickers perspective um, you know these women and children are a commodity and so it's a business to them so if they can uh, generate revenue or make income off of selling videos or films uh, and of course uh, sex then that's just a natural progression for them and so what happens is is now uh, pornography that was once taboo or uh, nearly impossible to get is easily accessible uh, on the internet. Right. And so you have these men who are contributing to the problem of ch uh, child trafficking because via one click away they can get access to all of this uh, illegal content. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, some guys today were commenting on our Facebook page about how you know pornography is not it's victimless, it's not harmless at all. But like you just said, a lot of this stuff is illegal content. A lot of pornography is produced of trafficked individuals. Sure, I mean, you know, the next time someone watches uh, pornography, they need to understand that that's someone's daughter, sister, relative, and that many of these women and children are not there by choice. Right. They're being held captive. They're, uh, and whether that's with chains or financial constraints or taking passports or drug addiction, uh, they're not there by choice. And so when you watch pornography, you are contributing to the problem of trafficking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard um, recently that a new kind of favorite type of porn is this live pornography that people can go to websites and they, you know, click they want a redhead who's certain height. Right. And, and then they show up on a webcam. Um, and the thing is that so many of those women are just stashed somewhere. Right, yeah, you can literally create your content, and of course the trafficker is going to post that and, and sell it over and over again, again, to generate revenue, mm -hmm. because to them it is a business. So what are you guys doing to kind of try to help help these victims? Well, we have four uh, action pillars, is what we call them. Uh, first, uh, you know, accreditation. We have an accrediting body for shelters. Uh, we consider uh, our standards, you know, probably the, one of the best in the, in the shelter um uh, cause, if you will. Uh, we have advocacy and education, which is really advocacy is educating lawmakers and helping to change the laws so that the traffickers are punished appropriately mm -hmm. and that the victims are treated like victims and not criminals. Uh, the education component is really about going out to the church body, 
uh, the general public and getting them engaged on the issue. And then lastly is our restoration piece and we uh, work with other organizations to uh, open shelters and create safe havens so that these uh, women and children uh, have a place that they can be healed. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, in 2012, our initiative is 12 in 2012. We're going to open 12 shelters, eight domestic, four internationally. And oh, wow. Eight in the United States. Eight in the United States. You know, we're, we're going through the proce process now of selecting locations and partners that, uh, that basically can adhere to our high standards. And uh, we also want to take a look at the map and make sure that if there's a geographic area that is currently not being served by a shelter, uh, that we open one in that area because there are so few beds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is estimated uh, that there are 200,000 children being trafficked in the United States, and yet there are only a few hundred beds available to treat these primarily young girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to get the community involved. We have to engage and stop this heinous crime child trafficking or trafficking in general. Now can I break up some of the things you just said and ask you? Absolutely. Specific. So um, one about just about the shelters. I've heard from some of the victims of tr human trafficking that there there aren't many shelters at all here in the United States. Why why is that? Why aren't isn't the government doing more about trafficking here in our within our own borders? Well you know I think um, there's been awareness um, an awakening, if you will, on, on human trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, I think really the face uh, over the past couple of years of trafficking has been overseas. But now with uh, you have states doing independent studies. A great example is the state of Tennessee. Their Tennessee Bureau of Investigation did a study. Uh, it was just released. And it estimates that in the state of Tennessee, there are 4,000 children being trafficked for sex. So now we have quantifiable state data that, that that you know underscores the problem of trafficking here domestically. So with awareness, there, there's now the initiative to make a difference. And so mm -hmm. uh, you know, Congress is looking at a bill that'll that'll help facilitate shelters being open across the United States. But we're involved in that process, and we want to see that passed. Uh, but you know, you, you know, every day is a fight to to raise awareness, to and to open more shelters. Definitely. Um, another question is, I've heard about these John schools. Are you familiar with them and what they do there and if they work? Well, you know, there's a there's an annual convention for uh, Johns uh, um, or actually uh, pimps, uh, and there's actually a, a a book that you can download that teaches them how to become pimps. Wait a second, an annual convention for <laughs> yeah, pimps? They, these men who are taking women and children against their will and forcing them. Yeah, and there's a they get together and the, there's they get awards for the number of uh, prostitutes that they have and. Uh, just the, the the audacity or the uh, just how bold they are about their business and uh, yeah it, it's very out in the open um, we as Americans have to engage uh, the data is there it, it, it's hard to uh, stomach and to, and to get into because of the nature of, of this issue but you know uh, that doesn't mean we, we, we don't start fighting right right um, now when you say John schools uh, I'm not particularly uh, familiar with that process. Okay. Maybe we'll hear about that later. Um, it's just that I heard it's a measure that the government is taking to help rehabilitate. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit more just about uh, your organization where people can find more information and yeah, you if can, they can help with anything? Absolutely. You can go to abolitioninternational.org. Uh, we have a, a comprehensive website. You can sign up to uh, participate in your local community. Uh, we're adding state directors uh, weekly. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have internship opportunities um, that typically are overseas, that where you can work in orphanages. Uh, but you know, you have to typically be a student. We have a very rigorous standard that we adhere to. We won't right. just send anyone. Uh, but we really want to to get individuals engaged because the more people that are touched by this issue. The, the sooner we can bring an 